All right. Well, happy Thursday. We are going to have a lot of fun today. Um, I missed you Tuesday. Hopefully you didn't miss being here um, and stayed warm because that was much better than driving in on Tuesday. Uh, I hear it was really icy here. It wasn't so bad at home, but um, so I'm a little, a little further away. But is it bad around here? West of here, too, it was like just like I couldn't even walk outside. Oof, gross. Yeah, that's no fun. Uh, so we're going to talk about Project Zero today. Super exciting. This is our first individual project. I hope you will enjoy it. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. Um, and that'll be due in two weeks. Um, so next, next Thursday, right, getting into February already, uh, we'll do that one. We'll, I'll go over the solution for it. So we've got some time to get started on it. Uh, we'll finish up talking about exceptions and pointers. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have a live Zoom session. My apologies. Um, it just it wasn't going to happen. So um, I sent a video. Today. Hopefully you had a chance to watch it. I put the code out there from the, some of those examples. We can talk about that as well. Um, should be okay? All right. I, I miss the fact that we have technology means we don't get snow days. So it used to be if there's a snow day, you just got the day off. And now they're like, hey, we have a snow day. You get to do school at home because <laughs> we can do that. So um, sorry. So hopefully you got a chance to enjoy it a little bit. We'll see. Um, so we'll talk about that, uh, the project, and we'll finish up chapters 7 and 8 in Zybooks here on exceptions and pointers. That sound like a good plan? Okay. Should we talk about the project first? That way I might, one of some of the things we talk about when we go code, through the code examples might make a little more sense, maybe? Okay. We can do that. All right. So, oh, I did not add it to the project. Sorry. I'm going to drag this in here. Into there. There it goes. Come on, Canvas. Canvas is usually pretty nice. This is one of the nicer learning management system tools. And then February 8th, right? Should be two weeks from today, 9 30 in the morning. I'll go over the solution. All right, so we have got to catch them all. It's very important here. Um, we're going to write two classes here. We're going to write a trainer class and we're going to write a fighting pet class to avoid trademark issues here. Um, can't even call them pocket monsters. Um, so our trainer class will have a collection using these dynamic arrays using pointers here. So we're going to have attributes for name, so the name of your trainer, the level of your trainer, how many experience points you have, the max number of fighting pets you can have, and the dynamic array of your fighting pets. So we'll have this collection of them that we're using dynamic memory for. We're going to include our destructor, our copy constructor, and our copy assignment operator. This is that rule of three idea. If we have one of these things, we need all three of them because we're dealing with interesting stuff in dynamic memory. We want to avoid memory leaks. Okay. Um, so our trainer needs public methods for set and get name, max number of fighting pets, and um, the attributes. That's bad English here. Um, I, don't, I copy pasted this too. So. <laughs> um, Max number of fighting pets. That's a weird one. Let me fix that. Pets. We're going to have get methods. No, nope. get methods for the level and experience points. We're going to be able to add experience points. If your experience points goes greater than your level times a thousand, you increase your level and you reset your points to zero. So every level you need to get more experience points to go up a level as we start adding experience points. It's just a, a silly calculation here. Um, so for name and max number of fighting pets. We're going to add a method for add fighting pet. We're going to add it to the fighting pet array in the next open slot. So if we have this dynamic array that can store X number of fighting pets, right? we're going to put it in the next open one. So I might have two fighting pets in my array. It should go in the third slot. Or if I have seven, right, it should go in the next slot. And then I, so we need to be tracking which one there is there, or if we have no more slots left, we have to raise an exception, right? Because we have our max number of fighting pets that we can have, right? We need to raise an exception. No, there, you don't have enough room. You can't have any more pets, right? Um, in addition to that, because we want to be, you know, a little bit efficient with our memory here, I don't want to size this to have 100 if I'm only going to store two or three. We're going to have our method for add more fighting pet storage. 
which makes a new array with a larger size and copies the fighting pets into the new array. And don't forget to delete the previous one. Right? Don't leave any dynamically allocated memory around when we're done with it. So we have to resize and copy things over. Right? So as we add more storage, right, we can keep doing that. And then fighting pets have a name, a number, a combat power. We don't really care too much about all the different attributes here. Just a couple of them. We'll have sets and gets and a constructor and other things that we need here for the fighting pets. Does that make sense? All right, and then I gotta add a rubric here. Uh, let me save this. So this is for project zero. All right, so this is our fighting pet class. I don't know, trainer class, we'll do the trainer class first. So this is gonna have our attributes, public get and set as needed. Right? So just be able to get and set your values in the trainer class, we get two points. Right? We need get methods for all of, our, all of our things, levels, experience points, those things. Um, then we'll have our trainer class uh, destructor, copy constructor, constructor, copy assignment operator. Right, so as we use these trainer objects, because they're allocating dynamic memory, we have to make sure that when we delete them, we free up the memory. When we create a copy of them, we're making a copy here of the stuff in dynamic memory. And when we do the copy assignment operator, same thing as well. Right? This is, we'll look at the, those three big operations here as we go. Um, and then our trainer class dynamic array of fighting pets. Pets. And then add fighting pet, resize array as needed, or raise exception, throw exception. And then the last one is that little fighting pet class. All right, so that should be 10 points here. Again, the points only really matter in the, this category. So the idea here is as we do more and more projects, they get worth more points. Because just like math class, you don't get to forget anything, right? It just kind of all builds on itself. So we'll use all these same things we've done in the next project, and it'll just be more, and then more, and then more, and then more. Um, it's quite fun that way, right? All right, does that make sense for the rubric? So 10 points here for doing it piece by piece by piece by piece. This is the idea. Now, nothing in here needs a main method, but you probably want to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, right? Don't, don't just write the code and hope. It doesn't work very well. And sometimes it does, but most of the time it does not, right? So we got to be able to write the class and use it or test it to do something to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, right? But I don't really need the main method here, right? Um, someone else can use our class to build fun, interesting games. There's a new one that just got really popular. Um, it's, it's like the new most popular game out there that I forget what it's even called now. You have these little pets. Pal World. Pal World, yeah. Um, I haven't played it. Um, I heard it's really fun. So, is it? Okay. I mean, maybe maybe this can be the base of the next Pal World here. We can, can ride on its coattails and get popular here. But uh, that's what we're going to work on. So, this should take you to the repository. Uh, yeah, for Project Zero, I got the right link here. Right, this is the private repository. You put your code in here. Right, and we're in pretty good shape. Okay. All right, let me uh, pull up GitHub here. Make sure I've got uh, 200. All right. <clears throat> Are we feeling okay on exceptions? We don't need to spend much more time on that from Tuesday. Do you wanna go through it? Questions, thoughts? You showed up, so you get to ask me questions. Um, everyone else just gets stuck with the video. All right, that one's okay. All right, should do more on pointers then. All right, let's spend some time looking at uh, pointers going through here, making sure we're taking care of the destructor, the copy constructor, and the copy assignment operator. Those are the fun ones here. 
That's why I lost my toolbox. Hit the wrong button on it. I just want to unpin it. There we go. No, no. Okay. All right, so we had some fun with exceptions. And then we started this gradebook piece here. Dealing with pointers, dereferencing pointers, right? And then our dynamic memory. I think I have that here in gradebook. So this gradebook class, right, is going to have some dynamic array of students. So we can allocate memory and say, hey, I will have some number of students based on my gradebook here. And then students, right, my student class, I throw that down here. Um, where did I put that? My student class has name, ID, score, and then an array of scores, which is fun too. So I can have dynamic array of scores to store, as many scores as I want to store in here for a student, right? So scores then gets to be allocated with this new keyword. If we're using new, right, we know we're dealing with memory management. Got to be careful. We don't want memory leaks. Memory leaks are sad. Programs crashing are sad. So when we delete student, this student destructor, here we use the little tilde, tilde character for our destructor. What do we do when we clear up one of these objects? How do we release that memory that we allocated? Well, we want to delete with the array notation, right, to delete all of the scores. It's, it's an array of pointers here, essentially, right? I'm sorry, let me put this on quiet. So don't just delete like we would do a single pointer, right? Make sure we delete the array here for that, okay? That's cleaning up after this one, the destructor. So I should have had copy assignment operators in here as well, right? but we didn't have that one in here. So we got to add that one. I don't think we finished adding that one in. Because if we're, if we're dealing with memory management, we need to make sure that when I make a copy of student, I'm also doing the right thing with the memory here. Right? So if I make two students, let me just go back into main here real quick. Yeah, if I've got make a student, Eric equals student. No, notice there's like two constructors even here. Right? I didn't write this one here but it gives me one that can give it a reference to a student. This is the copy constructor or the one we wrote here, right? Have you seen that when you, in Visual Studio, that suggests what you should use, right? So this is the one we're gonna start with for now. So we'll have Eric ID, I don't know, maybe ID five, doesn't really matter here. And I'll give myself a, a hundred. If I wanna make another student and make a copy of my student here for another one. Let's say student or two equals a student. I said, okay, give me the reference. So I can give it another instance of student here to copy when we can make a new object, when we construct. This is the copy constructor. So make a copy of this one. And we didn't write this code here. So if we try and debug this one, and I want to step into there's no code because we didn't write one, right? If I wanted to, to step into 24, right, where we have, oh goodness, there we go, 24, right? I can step into this one because I wrote a constructor here. You know you can drag that arrow around? I don't know if I've ever shown anybody that. Drag the little yellow arrow to go back a line. Maybe you don't have to like run it again. That was fun. Um, but so we have code here, right, for allocating this. So if we want to make a copy constructor, we need to write our copy constructor. Right, so a student given a constant student reference. Uh, other or something or to copy or I don't know what you want to call it. Call it something. Right. And again, this little constant here is indicating we're not going to change this student. We're kind of we're, we're telling them if you give me a reference here, I won't change the reference. It's safe to give me a reference here. Did you guys do any of the reading in Zybooks? Everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. No, okay. I, I would definitely recommend you read it. Um, it'll make everything make a little bit more sense, right? So you don't have to read it before, 
It's okay. I get it. Um, but if you read it after, you're seeing it again another way. Right? I'll try and give you an example. The book will give you another example. Then you'll practice things, and then you'll write, write, do them again for projects. So like, you're getting it four or five times. Hopefully after the fifth time it sinks in. It's okay if it doesn't the first time. But, you know, that's why we repeat things over and over and over again. Um, it's actually a really cool thing on like how pe how brains work and how people learn things. Um, oh, what is that tool called? Times to repeat. Yeah, that's this is what it is. Depends on what it is. So at least three times to get it stored in your long term memory, which is cool. Seven repetitions or more for things you're familiar with without, oh, the, yeah, spaced repetition, that's what it is. Um, what is spaced repetition? Come on, let's go. Searching. Do you like how it seems like it's typing at you? I think that's a cute little feature. It also annoys me sometimes because I'm impatient, but. Wow. Created the forgetting curve. This is really neat stuff. Space. I love it's citing its source. This is really smart and handy. Like this is where I got the information from. Spaced repetition. I hope this helps. Is this Bing's AI? Bing's copilot. Yeah, AI. Um, just really cute. All right. Uh, so spaced repetition. This is what we're we were looking at here. So how you can remember something here. This is the forgetting curve. Right. in your memory and how long it takes to forget things, right? Um, where does he have it in here? Yeah. Free space re repetition schedule. This is it, the FR, FSRS. Yeah, this one here. Um, Anki, that's what it is. Free and open source flashcard program. So this one, um, does the spaced repetition for you automatically. So the idea with this, where I wanted to, to like have it in here, where is it? Intervals, oh, mixed, interesting. This is really long, my goodness. Where's the, I just want the summary line. This is not very useful. Okay. The Leitner system. So the idea is if you know it, you can test yourself further out later on. And if you get it wrong, you put it back into the, hey, let's repeat this earlier pile as you're like testing yourself on memorizing things. So the more repetitions you get, the longer it will stay in your head. Like we want to try and keep stuff in our long-term memory. So if you do it just three times in a row, you'll probably know it for a day. If you do it again the next day, you'll probably keep it for like three days. And someone had a really nice graph here. I don't know. There's a spaced petition memory chart. Someone's got something good here, right? How we can do this. Hey, why is that so tiny? Okay, there we go. So the, no the initial time and how much you're going to remember over time. If you start adding in reviews, right, it will decay slower the more you've repeated it is the idea with this this is why we practice this stuff so much um, and it's not worth keeping it all in your head necessarily but knowing the concepts and knowing where to go look to find the information right, the, the more we've seen it we can recall hey i know this i know this topic i know this uh, this concept i know this idea that's why we practice things so many times you know after spending four years in school or five years in school you've practiced things a lot of times right you should be good at a couple of them at the end of school, I hope. That's sort of the goal. Um, so this is um, one of the interesting pieces here. This is totally off topic. I'm sorry. I'll get back on track in just a minute here. Um, but different ways of learning and different ways of, of why we have semesters the way that we do. And some schools will give you a shortened semester, and you can blitz through the content a little bit faster. And the idea is, hey, I only have to focus on two classes for seven weeks rather than four classes for 15 weeks. This is easier, right? But it doesn't help with this learning curve and our, our learning repetition stuff. So actually spacing content out can help you retain it for longer term, 
even if it's not quite as easy because you're dealing with four different concepts at the same time with four different classes. So um, all sorts of interesting stuff there. Well, wow. all of this because I said we need to practice and do the reading in Zy books. Okay. So I had my coffee this morning. Um, I actually had a decent sleep. Feeling pretty good. I'm doing all right. I got more coffee though. Don't worry. Um, we got we got time. All right. So to make a copy of this student, right, I need to make sure that I'm not setting my array equal to their array because I don't want two pointers pointed to the same location in memory. I don't want a shallow copy. Right? Shallow copies are bad. Because then if their copy changes, it affects mine. Or if their array changes, it affects mine because I don't have my own copy of it. I'm just looking at theirs. So did I ever set a thing to set score? I think I did, so I could set score. No, I never did. Shoot, okay. This scores array, we never, I never finished the scores array. So we want to be able to set a score, set score, um, given a, those are ints, right? So I'm given an int for index and an int for the score. I'm going to take my scores array at the index and assign it the score, right? So I've got this dynamic array here of size 50. I'm going to go set that score here. Now I probably wanted to make sure that I don't have a bunch of garbage here. I think I, I think this example didn't get finished right when I copy pasted this in. So probably would make sense then for int index is zero, index is less than fifty, index plus plus. Take my scores at the index and assign a zero. That way I don't have garbage. Something here might might be fine. Or uh, I mean zero is technically a valid score, so maybe like negative one might be better. And then I would know negative one means I haven't added a score here yet. This is the problem with like oversizing things. It, it gets to be a little bit messy. Or maybe I could have a way of tracking how many scores I have entered so I would know which is the next score. Or I can just let you tell me. Right? We, got, we got different options on how we want to deal with this, right? Depends on what our code is supposed to do, which is how we want to go and solve it. But this should be fine. So we'll, we'll assume this negative one is unscored here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if we really wanted to, we could we could add some cute little like constant value here, so we don't have these magic numbers, right? That's probably would be a better way to do it here. So I could have a like a static constant value that exists once. This idea of if it is static, it belongs to the class, not every instance. So it's a nice way to have these like these constant values around. Um, so I could have static constant int. I don't know. Uh, no score or something or unscored. How about unscored? It's negative one. So I can assign it as unscored. I think I spelled that right. Unscored. Looks really weird. Words in all caps confuse me. So if it's static here, right? This is uh, belongs class level, the class definition level. Really, not for each instance. So even if I make a hundred students unscored is only stored one time in memory right and that, that's the the savings here of making this static class level is I don't need each individual student to have the, its own unique value for unscored because it's just a, like a little flag essentially here so we're just keeping this value it just means something so I have a nice name for what's happening here and I can see this score is unscored in my list here right? um, just so I can go through there all right so I need to Oh, look at that. It's even telling me. I haven't initialized things. It's so helpful. All right, so to make a copy, right, so my this name, or really I can just uh, name, right, because I'm not hiding anything, can be other dot name. You can assign my string equals their string. Right? Uh, my ID equals other dot ID. My score equals other dot score. Right, just going through, so the primitive types here are pretty easy for us to copy. Not super concerned here, um, right? Because we're not going to point to the same location, right? We're going to get values. But the scores array, we need to allocate new memory for it. So my scores, again, I want to just repeat this piece here. I feel bad about it, but that's okay. Um, probably should add, now I have the same code twice and I feel bad about myself. So I'm going to go add a, a little helper method here, right? And I don't want this little helper method to be public. Right? No one else should have a way to initialize my scores array. So I can make this function in the private section here. 
right? So that no one else has access to it. Right? So I can say this is my uh, void initialize score array or something. And then we can do this here. I'll cut that out and say initialize score array. And now I feel less bad about myself. Because right? now we're calling our little helper function to initialize our score array. Oh, I should set score. Should I use that method? It should be fine because it's not going to be invalid. I think we're okay there. To initialize the score array. Right? And now what is it complaining about? IDs uninitialized scores. I thought I did. ID name. Why is that so cranky? Do I need this? I don't think I need this. This. I think it just needs to catch up here. I don't think it needs any of those. Yeah, it's just cranky. Okay. Sometimes it's it's not very helpful. So after I've initialized mine with default values, I can go through and grab all of their default values. Right. So then I can say for in index zero. index is less than 50 and it, I'm feeling bad about having this 50 thing here again too. Maybe I want this to be a, another constant value, right? That way if it ever needs to change, I don't need to change the number 50 a bunch of times, right? Should feel a little bad about that. Um, I don't think that needs to be public. Probably is fine to be a private value here. We'll say static const int max scores. Is 50. Here we go. And I can use this instead of 50 every time and feel better. Just puts a nice name to what we have here, right? Index plus plus. Now I'm going to go through and take my scores at the index and assign it the value of other dot scores at the index. Right? Go and grab their value, let's put it into my array. And we're just dealing with integers here, so I'm just getting it those by value, right? So now when I make another student here, as a copy of another, I've got new memory, new array, right? Probably need a uh, int for get score too, don't we? Get score, given the int index, scores at index. Probably should do some checking here, right, to make sure we don't do bad things too with this index. Okay, so if my index is less than zero, or I could say or, right, or my index is greater than or equal to max scores, I'm going to throw index error. Where's my error here? Error. We've got a good one in here somewhere. Out of bounds index? Out of bounds error? Where is it here? Range? Probably a range error. Invalid index. There. Just to do some little sanity checking. Now, the sad thing, right? I have to do this again. And I have the same code twice. Does we feel bad about that? So there should be, if I do this right, and we go to quick actions and refactoring here, I want to extract this as a function. And I'm going to let the tool do some typing for me here. So, okay, where do we want it here? Well, sure. So this will be, I don't know, check for valid scores index. Right? You can put nice names to things, right? And now we can check for valid scores index. Right? And not have the same code twice. Again, I don't think I need that one to be public, so I'm going to move it up to my private section here. Just it's going to be a little bit cleaner here, right? So other people won't be using this function outside of my class. Y'all are not excited enough for this. I know it's early in the morning. It's okay. Okay. So we can get scores. We can set scores. We can copy then from another student, right? So if, if me, let me just comment this out for a second here. We'll see if we can if we can break it first. That was a control E and then C for commenting, where you can go to the edit menu and do all that stuff. That's always fun. All right, so if we have a student, and we make a copy of that student, and then we want to set score. So we'll say eric.setscore, and then I want 
this version, right, we've got these overloaded functions, one that is the double score and one that is the arrays score by index here, right? So we'll say, hey, let's set score 0 to 42. And then we can, we'll just see out here because that's fine. So Eric's score 0 is going to be Eric.get score then of index 0. And then we want Eric 2, right? Eric 2's score? Sure, why not? Eric 2. Okay, so what do you think we're going to get here? 42? Let's see. So step 40. Oh, I forgot my end lines, but we get 42, right? Because I didn't have a different copy of that dynamic array. So the default copy constructor that we get if you don't write code, remember generally default constructors are garbage. That's a, that's a pretty good rule of thumb, they're garbage. Just write your own constructor, right? So it by default then just gave me a shallow copy. I said, okay, sure, I'll copy the value of the scores array. And we're dealing with pointers. The value of a pointer is the memory address of what's actually stored. So it made a copy of the pointer, but the copy of the pointer was the address that we would go actually look for these values in memory here. So the default copy then is no good here. Let's go and uncomment this. E U, I think. Control E and U. I don't know why I know these shortcuts, uh, but tr keyboard shortcuts are amazing. We love, love keyboard shortcuts, right? When you go do these things, right, it tells you what all these shortcuts are. Someone, one of my students, I forget who it was, posted, they just got a sticker pack. And they said it was only like a dollar to order these stickers. And one of them was a Vim sticker. And I really want to order a pack of Vim stickers that you guys can all put on your laptops now that you've used Vim and suffered through it. So you can proudly put that on your laptop and people will be proud of you. Yeah, it's, it, it was fun, right? I know a bunch of people didn't finish it. That's okay. So I pushed the date out for that lab too because, yeah, that's fine. No worries. Um, all right. So let's see if it works now, now that we have a proper copy constructor that we wrote ourselves. Let's see. Let's step. And now we get negative one. That's our unscored value, right? So now the copy actually works, which is cool. Now, just for fun, right? Let's make a copy again after I set a score and see what do you expect the value of score zero to be after we make a copy after we set a score. We should get that score, right? Because we, we've copied the current values here. But then if I want to go change it again, it shouldn't change, right? Let's go put, bump that up to 77 here. Oh, I forgot all my end lines. Shoot, let's do some end lines. End line, end line, end line, end line, end line, end line. There we go. So this makes it, so we want to test, oh goodness, what did I, error list. Where's my error? Where's my red line? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can't redefine Eric 2. That's right. So Eric 2 equals. There we go. That's weird. It wasn't showing up before. All right, so the first time, okay, we'd expect it to give us the unscored value, negative 1. Now we're going to make a copy again. Oh, we could have, we should have stepped into that. Let's step into that here, right? Because we can. So we're going to step into, and we go into our code. The debugger here is amazing. You're going to love it, right? We should always use the debugger here. So now we can see this, right, is my current instance, and the other is the one that was passed here. I'm going to go make copies, initialize our score array, copy the scores over, copy the scores over. This is super exciting as we go through. I don't need to do all the indexes, so I'm going to step out. And then we'll step, spit out our scores again, and we should now have, uh-oh. Well, that's not right. That's a bad value. All right, well, let's go see. Go step into here. So let's step into get score for an index of zero. I this is me, right? My scores dynamic array pointer here. Uh oh, it's got some garbage values. That's a bad sign. What did we do wrong here? Okay, that's fine. We'll step out. Let's come back in here. Let's step into this one here. So we initialize our scores array. So this is our this pointer. We got our scores array. 
should have... Okay, so now we got some negative one values. That should be better here. What do we have here? So index is zero. So my score is index of zero. And their scores, index of zero. Let's see if that copies over here then. 42. Is that the right, should be the right value, right? 42. Okay, that all looked fine. Step out. Now, Eric 2. I'm just going to see what its values are here. Huh. To get score, it got to be garbage. Well, shouldn't have been doing that. That's very interesting. Why? How did that turn into garbage? That's sad. Why? It had the right number. All right, I'm confused now. Let's let's fine. We'll go back here, and let's step into again. Let's make sure. So our scores array has the value to start now. It's got a 42. I really want to see what happens here. Why that blows up? I don't want to go to 50 though. This is really annoying. I guess I should just change max scores. We just, we just change index, right? Can we just change it to like 49? There we go. All right, so the loop is done. So score still has the value 42. And then Eric 2 scores is still 42. And then it went away. As soon as I stepped off of that, it went away. That's crazy. Why did it go bad? It was there. Huh. I'm a little confused. That's okay. Um, I realize we did a bad thing though too when we initialized the scores array. Right? Because we already existed, right? Or if we already existed, I tried to like. Uh, Replace the value. That's what happened here. I think that's what happened. Um, I was gonna have, I'm going to have a memory leak because I had memory allocated there. Right, The first time we created it, it allocated the memory for the scores array. And then we went and did the exact same thing and allocated new memory without freeing up the old one. So let's see if we can clean that up. So I think in our initialized score array, we can delete scores first. To make sure we clean it up, then we can go allocate it here. So if we had an old version, then we'll have a new version put on top. Let's see if that makes anything better. I don't know if it's going to or not. We'll see. I'm going to reassign Eric. Let's see. So my this my scores array. Oh goodness! Can't even. How pretty this is! I made a little, like, a little, a little ASCII art in the delete scalar CPP file. This is a fun comment, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so hey, we can't just delete it here. So if so if scores does not equal a null pointer, you can go delete it. It's probably safe here. Let's try that. All right, so now we're in our initialized score arrays. It is not a null pointer. Is it? No, we're still crashing. Shoot. This is going very well, very well. If it's not, I want to delete. I can't delete because we haven't allocated it yet. That's so sad. Hmm. Didn't crash the first time though, right? I'll put it up here and see. They didn't crash the first time, this one ran. 
initialize my score array works. Right, we have our score array. I should have stepped into that one. Step into. Allocates memory. It goes and sets values. We're going to go copy off of them. We've got all the values. So Eric 2 score should be negative 1 to start. It's good so far. Step into, step into, so my scores, unable to read the memory. Why? It should have had a value here. This is super interesting. Why did it break? From my constructor. Where's my scores? I can't read it. Huh. Doing a bad thing here, I guess. All right. Well, that's not where the error is. Should have gone better, I'm sorry. Let's see. Don't think that's our problem though. So why is it bad? Hmm. Well, I'll leave that out for now. I'll leave myself a note. I'll come back and fix this. Fix me. I'll see. Um, I'm unhappy that my score is not working though, but that's okay. Um, we'll see if the other ones work. Yeah, where, where do we leave off? So we're stepping. So after I set all the scores, did we get 77 was set, but we still got the garbage. So we got to fix those garbage values, but we'll get there. Okay. All right. The other one we ought to look at, I'll come back and fix that one for you later. I don't know why, where it's going wrong off the top of my head, um, is the copy assignment operator. Right? The last piece there was, so this was the copy constructor. We also have the syntax for the copy assignment operator. Say error 2 equals Eric here. Say this one equals this one. Right. Then if we do our scores, let's see what our scores are. I guess I should add some more. So see out after assignment operator. There we go. So I'll add some details here. This is after setting Eric score to 77. And this is after copy operator, uh, copy constructor. And this is after Eric score to 42. All right, so now we have some more details. So if I just say Eric 2 equals Eric, what do you expect to have happen? Right, we're going to assign, I'm sorry? Scores, scores be the same. Let's see if that works for us then. Right. So let's, uh, let's move our breakpoint down here maybe. We don't have to keep stepping so far. Right, and then we'll step. And we get the scores that's the same after the assignment operator, because now I have two objects pointed to the same location in memory. So if I look in debug mode, my Eric and Eric2, the memory address stored for scores here, something, 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 4A80, sorry, it's a little tiny to see on the screen here. But you can see these dynamic arrays have the same value. When we use the assignment operator, we're getting copies of values. For our primitive types, that's fine. Copies are great. For dynamic memory and pointers, a copy is a bad thing because now I have two pointers pointed at the same location. Right? So if one of them changes, they both change. So what we want to do then is make sure we are creating the copy 
assignment operator. So this one, I always get confused on what that one looks like. It's, uh, goodness, did I do it for gradebook? I want to steal off of that. There we go, yes. The copy assignment operator syntax looks super fun, because why not? We'll steal it over here. So for student, then, the copy assignment operator is a student reference. So we're going to give back a student reference when you use the operator equals sign here. For a student reference, we'll call other. Right? So when you say, hey, make some student reference equal another student reference. Right? That's this student reference equals another student reference. Reads a little funny, right? So it's, you know, some student equals some other student variable. Right? That's the assignment operator. Now, most of it's the same here, right? Actually, I think we can do all of it here. Let's see if that... Now, this one... I think, yeah, because we're initializing, I feel like this one needs to make sure we're deleting the memory, but that's okay. We'll come back to it. So let's see if it works any better for us now. Oops. We build errors. Oh, and then when we're done, we got to return this, right? So we return. Uh, now, this is a pointer, not a reference, right? So to remember to get the value that a pointer points at, you have to dereference it. So I can dereference my this pointer. This one gets super crazy looking, right? So I'm operating on my current instance when I change all these values, and I'm going to return my current instance as a reference. So we'll see if we can run this one here. So after I've done the assignment operator, right, my values should be the same because we have a copy. But now when I change them, that's right, we forgot to change them here again. So then let's go and change these here. Score to 100 here. Let's go set that score to 100. So back down here. Let's try that again. So now the score didn't change because we had a proper copy. So if we didn't have that copy, the copy assignment operator, let me comment this out, out real quick, and we use the default. Oops. E and C, there we go. For a copy and we run it when we set one it should set the other because it's a shallow copy right because we haven't fixed it yet but if we go and fix that code right undo no, no, uh, leave that one undo this one here there we go once we've actually done a proper copy of it here we're in better shape right. so this lets us use some fun syntax right to avoid when we're using dynamic memory to not have shallow copies. And it feels like a lot of work, and it is a lot of work. Right? Anytime we're using that dynamic memory, we run into potential issues. Right? So we want to make sure if we're doing one of these three things, right, if we need to have a destructor, then we need to have our other ones as well, right? because we're dealing with dynamic memory. So that's that rule of three idea the book talks about. So copy constructor, this is a copy constructor. This is the copy assignment operator, and this is the destructor, right, for those ones, for student. Is that fun? Okay. And then gradebook, I don't remember if I got to the end of this one in the video or not. Did you guys watch it? But I put the code out there. Okay. Uh, it has similar ideas here, right? I'm going to go through and grab. Now, I did fix this. Now, this, originally, it wasn't a deep copy because we we're saying, hey, this student equals another student. But now if the student has an assignment operator, this is fixed, right? Now it is a deep copy for students. So the problem is if you have objects that have objects that have objects that have objects all the like, way down this chain here, all of them need to be able to do this to make these deep copies to actually make sure we are allocating the dynamic memory appropriately, right? So these ones are no longer true because we fixed it. Because I can say this student reference equals another student reference, and it does the right thing for me. We just wrote that one, right? Can delete our students. Get students. Okay, good stuff. Does that help at all? Or are you just more confused? We got two weeks to work on the project. 
we're going to use all of these things we've talked about, right? So the trainer, right, has this dynamic array of fighting pets. We don't even need to have two levels here. The fighting pet doesn't have its own dynamic array, which is nice. So just make sure we are managing that and then are adding more storage for the fighting pet. Right? If you make a new array that's a larger size, you have to go make copies of them here, right? Now for these, copies are easy, right? They're just values. There's no other pointers we're having to deal with, so this is fine. We just make sure we delete the previous array after we make the new big one so we don't have memory leak, right? Memory leaks are bad. Think we can tackle this one? Okay, cool. Did you have questions about the lab that we were working on? I, th I think a couple of people said they had questions about the lab. Uh, that one just wasn't going to work unless you were on the VPN or the campus Wi-Fi. Um, the, the lab two was the new one that we started. Uh, this little vehicle using exceptions was the idea with this one. Right? So we're going to throw exceptions if bad stuff happens. That's the idea of throwing all those logic errors. So you did a bad thing. So exceptions are great because it forces whoever's using the code to deal with it or crash. If we just return an error, or even worse, your, your class just prints out, see outs an error, you can ignore it, right? So see outing errors is useless in classes because you have no idea if anyone's ever going to even look at it. Because the idea is our classes are portable. They can be used in all sorts of different places. Do, do you guys ever use console-based applications? No, like very, very rarely. So they, they are special cases. There's lots of cool command line tools and things you can do with this, but most users will never see that, right? So putting an error on the screen here is terrible because they can just ignore it. So the exception forces the program to do something about it here, which is nice. So we want someone to have to deal with it here. And then our classes are great. We're going to write amazing code that's going to be used in web applications and mobile applications and you know graphical user interface applications and all sorts of cool stuff that don't even have a console, right? So if you just spit stuff out to the standard out, it literally goes nowhere because it is never seen by any of those kind of programs. So um, exceptions is how our classes should communicate here. This is what we want to use. So this was the practice for that. Um, that'll be due next week. Um, it's the 30th here. Um, now, unfortunately, Tuesdays are just cursed in January, uh, but I won't be here next Tuesday. Uh, I've got to do some travel here. So I'll have another recorded lecture for you that you can watch for the, the lecture time, and I'll post the lab exercise, uh, but I won't be here to wander around and help with the lab exercise. My apologies. This should be the only Tuesday I'm traveling. Um, for the rest of the semester. But basically we had the first day of class, Tuesday, which most people are like, I didn't know I was supposed to show up for. Because I don't know why people don't run labs the first week, but whatever. Um, and then I was sick the next one, we had a snow day, and then I'm gone. But come February, March, and April, we'll be back to our regular lab schedule. It'll be great. We'll have lots of fun. Um, but I'll post in Canvas um, earlier this time to make sure that you know there's a video not to come for lecture because I won't be here. Uh, if you want to come, someone can hit play on YouTube on this like instructor station. You're welcome to log in and play it on the screen if you all want to get together and talk. Because uh, I know you'll miss each other Tuesday morning. So you get to be this nice like tight-knit group of people. Commiserate. We're all here early for a morning class, drinking your coffee together. Um, so it's the, the shared trauma that, bond, that helps us bond. Just weirdly true. That, that sort of happens. All right, questions, thoughts, concerns? I'll fix whatever was going on here with this one memory assignment error. Um, I will spend a little bit more time figuring out why it wasn't uh, deleting here and I was getting my garbage value, but I'll, I'll figure that out and let you know. Um, so I can post that code to GitHub. Here's now student. Now does deep copies. All right, questions, thoughts, concerns? If not, we can call it a day. Yeah, what's up? So for the first lab, now that I'm like on the campus Wi-Fi, I can just do it in the terminal? Yeah, yeah. So your SSH connection will just work because now you're on the Wi-Fi here. Uh, you just can't access the Unix server unless you're on the network here. So either be on using the Wi-Fi here or getting on the VPN. Okay. So, yeah, if you have trouble with it, let me know. Um, don't sweat that one. Like, we, that can happen at some point eventually. Um, so, like, I, I moved the due date, but uh, for that lab, I don't, don't really care. Even if it doesn't work for you next week and I'm not around to answer questions, we can wait till the week after. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything for that. So, just some practice. They're, the labs are exercises. Um, so, give it a good try. I'll get you unstuck if you get stuck on something. But um, if you're like, have no clue what's happening during the lab, that's probably a bad sign, right? Because 
hopefully everything's been explained and the book goes through and I go through things and you can just do them. And it's okay if we need to troubleshoot stuff, but you shouldn't be clueless. Right? That's sort of, that's like, everything's sort of, sort of like scaffolded. You do little practices and then we do the big projects and then our final project's even bigger and all that good stuff. Sort of everything's going to build up into that. Okay? So let me know if things aren't going well earlier rather than later. Um, that way I can help. Uh, and then we've got tutoring sessions, we've got SI sessions, uh, we've got lots of resources for you. Um, our friend, oh my goodness, was his name Andrew? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, he, he made a very sweet comment, um, and I appreciate him being open and honest about crying in his apartment, wondering if he should change majors or not because this was so hard. Um, but it reminded me, uh, we have a peer mentor? Someone from CAPS, the Counseling and Psychological Services or something? Let's see, born CAPS. What is it? Yeah, I, I, look at this. There are way too many acronyms here, but I got that one right. Um, they, they are going to come and talk to class at some point and let you know about all the services they offer. So not only do we have academic support services, but we have like psychological support services because life is hard and it's okay. Right? We're, we're here to help you with it. Um, I don't know how to fix these things. I am happy to refer you to professionals who know how to fix those sorts of things, or help with those, fix might be the wrong word here, um, deal with, cope, um, manage, those sorts of things, because it can get tough, right? I get it. Um, so please, if there's anything I can do, let me know. Um, let our SI leader know, let the tutors know, let CAPS people know, right? And long story, I, I'm, I'm on a roll today with long stories, um, but when you get out into the industry, the worst thing you can do is not know what you're doing and not tell anyone. That is the absolute worst thing you can do. When you get hired, everyone knows you're a junior engineer because you're new. That's okay. We, we don't expect junior engineers to do everything. But if you don't ask questions and don't ask for help and you just don't do the things that you were assigned and then the due date comes up and you're like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing, everything else gets thrown off here. Right? So the, the idea, the moral of the story is it's okay to ask for help when you don't understand things because that's what's going to happen in the real world. That's why we have senior engineers on staff and staff level engineers and people who have done this for 20, 30 years because they probably know what's happening, right? And it is they can help you get pointed in the right direction. So um, ask me, right? I'm happy to answer your questions. I, I come off like a jerk sometimes. I apologize. I have strong opinions, uh, but generally I'm kind of nice. Uh, so please let me know if I can help. Um, I, I never understand why people turn projects in that don't work. And they're like, oh, I couldn't get it working. And like for two weeks, I haven't heard from you. And it, um, that, that makes me sad. So uh, I'm not going to write the code for you, but like, I'll, hey, you should go look at this thing, right? I got stuff. All right. Thanks. Uh, we'll see you folks later.